Okay, so I wanted to quickly respond to one of the questions I saw in uh, a Reddit thread uh, on the the how to aim improve your aim in CS:GO video that I made uh, recently, and it, and it was it was just mostly about uh, deathmatch. And I like how someone raised this point: how there's a lot of people that you know, have this burning question of why is it that I can't perform the same way I do in deathmatch as I do in matchmaking? Um, so the reason, the straightforward reason, is because matchmaking or competitive Counter-Strike is not deathmatch. They are two separate things in terms of what they require from you. And deathmatch, you know, also isn't actually competitive. Deathmatch doesn't have a competitive element to it. Sure, you can you can feel like, hey, you know what, I, I want to have the best score on the server or whatever, you know, that could be a thing. But ultimately, there's no ranking. There's no, no one really gives a shit, you know, about how many frags you do or do not get in, in deathmatch. There's no pressure. You respawn. There's no weights. Uh, to you dying. There's no pressure behind that. There is no rounds that you may lo win or lose through your performance. There is no, there are no teammates um, for you to rely on or, or for, you know, uh, for them to rely on you. There is, there is no, you know, mid round, late round. There's no decision making effectively. Deathmatch is specifically just for moving around and shooting dudes in Counter-Strike, but it is a completely separate thing. Now, in, in a game of Counter-Strike, you, you're not trying to play deathmatch. You're not trying to, like, I'm not going to stand in the open flicking around in an actual match. What, and the reason is because playing good Counter-Strike is about creating as many advantageous fights as possible. You never want to be in a position to make a lot of flashy shots. By definition, you know, to get the advantage, um, you know, well, sorry, by definition, a flashy shot is often a shot that is very difficult to hit or you're very unlikely in that situation to pull it off for whatever reason. And that tip, does that sound like an advantageous situation to you? It is not. <laughs> generally speaking, a flashy shot is not. Obviously, you can make, you know, crazy flicks and stuff, but but generally speaking, you know, we're not we're not putting up, we're not trying to put ourselves in spots where we have to hit really hard shots. Your objective as a good Counter-Strike player should be able, should be to put yourself in the spots of most advantage possible to put yourself in the spots where you're going to most guarantee you're going to guarantee the kill you know as, as much as you possibly can or a spot where a teammate flashes for you so that guy's blind when you peek him he isn't he's defenseless like these these are the ways you win games of counter strike um you should never really you know if, if you're constantly putting yourself in spots where you feel like this, this you know what i was actually in a spot where i felt like i really didn't have a a chance here you know i really didn't have like they had a right eye swing onto me and I just like it's a crappy position. I mean, obviously you have to have the awareness of some of the basic mechanics of the game as to how to then judge and understand whether you're in advantage or disadvantage. But generally speaking, these are the things you need to be thinking about because you need to be able to, as a Counter-Strike player, constantly, constantly be looking for advantage and finding advantage and moving away from disadvantage. That's what you constantly need to be doing. That's one of the most basic core fundamental principles of playing anything competitively. Find every edge, play every advantage. That's how it works. And going back into the original question, deathmatch is not this. Deathmatch is not about any of those things. Therefore, deathmatch and, and playing competitive Counter-Strike are never going to be the same. What deathmatch is good for is getting used to just feel your mouse out, feel good moving it around in a game of Counter-Strike, you know, hit some headshots, feel good about the game, you know, just iron out the kinks, you know, see if you've got any issues, if you've got cold hands, if you've got to put that sweater on. And it's just, that's kind of what count, uh, what deathmatch is for, practicing the movement a little bit, maybe practicing some technique work, whatever that might be. But that none of that applies when you're actually in a match of Counter-Strike where this real decision-making comes into play. And let's also not forget that when we're talking about advantages, Counter-Strike is also a game with imperfect information. Everything's interconnected. You, your teammates, the map, the, the opponents, the economy, all these things impact how you're going to make a decision, how you're going to find disadvantage or not. You know, it's not like deathmatch where you're in a situation whereby you just spawn with a gun every time. There is no decision making in deathmatch really um, beyond deciding, you know, where you go off of your spawn if you even survive and don't get spawn fragged. So there you go. Those are my two cents on it. And I have to expand on this slightly because it is one thing to say deathmatch is not competitive. And it's one thing to say what deathmatch is good for and, you know, to describe what competitive is and what your goals are, which is what we just we just did. But, you know, what is the the next the next step there, you know, for, for those people that have still got that feeling? I can pay all these shots in deathmatch, but I can't translate. I feel like I can't translate how good I am at hitting shots into the game. 
Well, if you know, if you're that person, you're still wondering about that, then what you need to be able to go and do is to start learning about the game more and start thinking about the game more, start thinking about advantages more, start thinking about angles, look at the pros, go look at a POV demo and ask yourself the question, why did this player, like what are the advantages or disadvantages for this player to play this position? When, let's say, when, uh, you know, well, I was going to use an example of Rops, but he's, he's not really the anchor on the A-bomb site of Mirage anymore, but let's say that he is in this example. Or let's say you're watching Sanji, you know, when Sanji's on the B-bomb site and he's playing, okay, what's happening? Okay, the context is he's playing by himself and they're doing a mid-aggression. Okay, why is he taking the position he's taking? What does the mid-aggression mean? Mid-aggression means that if someone attacks the bomb site, his entire team's going to be out of position. Um, so, uh, you know, if, the, if there is an attack in an early timing, his entire team will be out of position. So does Sanji want to be aggressive? No, 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 he doesn't want to be aggressive. Oh, okay, well, that would then explain why he's playing quite defensively here because he's actually trying to buy time. His position now is completely defined about, uh, through the idea of buying time. He's got options for fallback positions. He's got options to use his utility in a way where he can buy time. He's got options to get information so he can cut out some of the rotation time for his teammates if necessary. Although at the same time, if they're pushing middle, they should also get some information. So maybe he doesn't have to take a spot which is going to be an information gathering position or have those options. You know, you need to go and start understanding the game, learning about the game. You can you can even check out some of the you know, self plug here, some of the skybox videos I'm doing where I'm talking about understanding the game from a macro point of view so that you understand when I kill someone, what happens on the map? What are the CTs most likely to do? What are the positions they're most likely to fall into? And then on the videos, I explain why that is. And then also we're talking about concepts such as if I get a pick uh, based on those, uh, you know, those ideas and, and understanding those rotations, what are the best ways to exploit that? How do I find the most advantage from that position as a team? What should I be thinking about? How should I be aware of the map and my team, you know, in these situations? What does the time have to do with what's going on in the rounds? What does my map control have to do with what I'm doing in the round? In some situations, if you have like if you have certain things on the map, that gives you options. But if you don't have anything on the map, then that also restricts your options. But you have to know what the best options are in any any certain situation. You've got to have that overall understanding of the overall picture to also have the understanding of the smaller picture. And then that informs your improvement. So in uh, eight minutes or less, we've got, we've got there, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any other questions for me, any things you want me to talk about or to answer, and I will happily deliver. Cheers.